Okay. So, what's up, y'all? There's Bass, Conscious Crypto. Reason for uh, this is I'm actually setting up for a mentorship soon. Um, so, check the video. There's going to be a specific video. It's like titled About My Mentorship. Um, I have questionnaires for you to answer, application questions to answer. I will sort through it. And again, I, I, I'm going to choose a small number of, of applicants that I think I can actually help the most. But uh, I also will ask for an economic incentive to be uh, to provoke your participation, which will not be for me. So this will be a no charge mentorship for me, but it will be uh, a an ask for you to donate the minimum two hundred fifty dollars to the charity of your choice. And remember that is tax deductible, so there is an incentive as well for you. Um, you don't get taxed on those dollars. You get to do some good in the world, and you provide an economic incentive for yourself to to make more money. And that is really the energy we want here is like, hey, you got to feel abundance. You got to feel gratitude. So $250 um, should be, you know, hopefully within your reach. Um, and and I really we might move it up to 500 or maybe in the next round of mentorship because it's, uh, to me, the guys like the people I want to be working with should be able to come up with that money and be able to donate it. Um, otherwise, like, I don't know what you're trading with, you know, unless you got funded accounts and, and again, a lot of those funded accounts cost uh, quite a bit more than, you know, $250. So with that said, um, the reason I'm making this video is I am in a short on something called Rose, uh, Oasis, I believe, and the ticker name is Rose and it's a crypto. And uh, I got that right here on the screen. But, uh, what I wanted to point out was I had gotten an entry here yesterday. Um, you see this little mark here. Um, I was expecting volatility spike and got that volatility spike. And when I saw that, um, let me show you on my charts. This was screaming at me. There were so many reasons I was willing to get in the trade early and willing to deal with some drawdown. And this was because, um, actually I can show you, I've already taken screenshots. So, um, so here it is. First one right here is a four hour chart. Well, I think I got a one hour chart over here. No, four hour. All right. So the four hour chart, Sure, it's in a little bit of an uptrend here, but I just saw like three hits of divergence essentially. Um, and with those hits divergence, I'm like, okay, vector activity at the top as well. Um, go to the one hour chart and there's a TDI trend line with divergence. This volatility spike had a huge vector rejection and then came up to recover some of that liquidity before what I assume to be likely moving down. Um, on the daily you can see that there's a uh, um, a TDI trend of bearish divergence, four freaking hits of bearish divergence. So as this is going up, this has been coming down. And so it's tried to reset down here. And I think it just was going to have problems right here. It's just had to have problems at this TDI trend line. I love TDI trend lines. You had that with the four hour bearish divergence. You had that with the one hour TDI trend bearish divergence. And, and you have uh, so many reasons to enter the trade. So the uh, reason I'm making this video though is this is why it's so important to stay on top of your freaking platform and your trades and see what you're doing. Um, I added to this trade and unfortunately it was stuck over here on limit. So when I actually put the a doubling my, my position size, which was up here originally, um, it came, went in as a limit order. It went in as a limit order and I saw the two lines but I did not register I just was like, oh, those are the two trades because some of the other platforms I, I trade on, like MT4, which I can't trade on anymore, but Match Trader, DX Trade, they show two different trades and they're separate. But with most of these crypto leverage platforms, they actually merge uh, the trades and like change your entry point. So sometimes that's good for the psychology, sometimes that's not great. So I just had to add on this down candle and I was like, oh, I don't like that. Like, I, it, it was upsetting. So I left my limit order here because I'm like, I want to remind myself, like, this is where you intended to get back in. Um, that is where I intended to take the trade again. And so looking at it, um, it's like, yeah, it's not the best badass freaking entry or anything like that, but I saw this rejection. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take that. It's not the volatility I wanted, but it's enough to be like, okay, that's an entry. This is awesome. But I was asleep. 
This was like opening of London. And if I was at the opening of London and I saw this, I, I actually am going to say it. I would have put everything on that fucking trade. I would have put $20,000 on that trade, my whole account, which is like insane. Bass, what are you talking about? That's crazy. I'm like, dude, I have so much room for drawdown. If I took a $5,000 loss, which I would sit there for a $5,000 drawdown, um, and like all they'd have to do is just close a one to probably a four hour above this high. And I'd be like, okay, whoops, that was invalidated. Um, this though, and in the opening session and like a fucking spike to the highs and then, a, uh, dude, I would have put everything in this trade. And then I would have like seen this action happen. Um, and I could have taken some off. I would have waited. Oh, recovery of the, you know. So I woke up around here, actually a little later than that. And I was like, oh, I need to get in this trade. And this is obviously where my stop is. And it's already shown the volatility of the upside. So my stop can be, my stop could be right above here. Easy. Um, anyways, it's already broken this, this low. And so to me, it's changing to a downtrend. Uh, I don't like how long it's taking, but that's just sometimes how the market works is it just like holds you up and tries to wear you down. Um, but I wanted to use this as an example of like, this is how I lost my FTMO account is I entered into a trade, um, that was the, supposed to be dollar yen short and adding to a dollar yen short, a perfect setup, something I felt so confident in. And I actually have it right here. Because it, with the position size that I was adding and had already had, it would have been a $40,000 profit. Um, huge runner, and I was ready for it. Um, but because I was not familiar with the platform and didn't double check my trades, I entered a short on Bitcoin instead. And then I left to go work out, to get my mind off things. And so I looked at the charts and I'm like, oh my God, this trade is going to be huge. I come back. And it turns out it's a short on Bitcoin and I did not want to be short on Bitcoin. And so I tried to write it out and see like, hey, okay, is it going to come back? Here, I'll show you to my entry. And I have a picture of that and the exact volatility down here that um, got me messed up. And this was near the all-time high of Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, like I can, I can play this. I can keep playing this. I can keep playing this. And let me just look it over. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, so, okay. Yeah, here it is. All right. Huh, this is, I don't, I didn't play for when I renewed my membership with, uh, trading view, I didn't renew to have like all this back data. So, um, it's fine. Honestly, like I'm all over this charts. I don't need to go back two years ago to look at 15 minute charts or 15 minute tables. That part of my career is past. Like I have a lot of confidence in reading the market as it is, reading the past few months, understanding where I am, um, going to higher time frames. Like I don't need 15 minute data feed, five minute data feed going into 2020. Don't need it. So anyways, um, I was like in this different strategy where like I saw three wicks down and I'd enter, I'd enter long and it, it doesn't, it's not dumb. So one, two, three wick down, enter long. This volatility short, it was just going up. It just kept going up. And every time there was a spike down, spike down, big, big TDI, RSI spike down, you could go long. It was a flushing out of leverage. You could go long, um, not huge position size and just write it. This was one that I set my stop all the way down here. I was like, okay, here's the spike down. Here's my stop down here. Wide, wide stop. Let's see if this thing comes back up. Well, it didn't and it spiked down and it flushed me out and I lost five grand in my trading account. I lost um, my funded account, which was like over eight grand in profit. And uh, I like capped the daily, whatever. And it was because of the earlier trade where I closed everything, including the dollar yen, because I misplaced a trade into the Bitcoin instead of dollar yen. I didn't double check it. And so when I came back, I had a loss in Bitcoin and dollar yen hadn't really moved. So I closed everything and was like, you got to just take the loss and move on. I was on tilt. I was on tilt watching dollar yen drop 
and seen like, okay, I got to make this money back in Bitcoin and like jumped in and tried to force it. And I'm like, I, in retrospect, the, the real mistake I made was I was not checking my work. I was just not checking my work. So that is what this exists for when I have an open trade and I'm like, I try to slow myself down when I open a trade and I'm trying to like be like, oh, okay, I'm opening a trade. I add confirmation check and then I write down how much I add. Cool. And that way I've double checked my work and I know I've done it. Well, I need to make new ones of these because what I need to do is add and then actually write down the size um, beneath it. And I... I didn't do that with Rose. So Oasis, sure, it's going in my favor. It's a $2,000 unrealized profit at the moment. And again, I added just now and it brought my entry from here to here. And of course, if I was awake, my entry would be here and I would have been betting the farm. But the reason I'm just saying this is like, this sucks, right? This absolutely sucks. To have this limit be sitting there when I know this should have been my entry and my entry should be up here and I should have twice the profit that I have right now. I should have twice that and that's what got me. I was like, why do I only have $1,500 in profit? Like this should be a $3,000 profitable trade. And I was looking at my targets and I was adding it in here and I was like, why would it only be $7,000 if it came all the way down and you guys, the only reason I'm actually looking at this is I read an article that said the RSI shows that this asset's going to move much higher, um, that an injective. And I looked at the charts and I was like, nope, it's doing the opposite. It is showing divergence. Like, I don't know, like they, I loved it. I loved it. I love like, oh, sure. Give me a signal and I'll go, I'll go check it for myself and do the contrary to what you're telling retail traders to do. So um, anyways, man, this is a break, right? If anyone can see, right, this is a lower high and now a lower low. It's inevitably gonna be a lower low. Um, and so this is a turning of this asset. And it doesn't mean it can't come up and get really volatile and come up and even disturb my trade and take away all my unrealized profit. And I'm prepared for that because again, on the daily, it is huge TDI trend with those three hits of divergence. And I would like to see at least a 0.618 golden pocket retracement to this support right here. That makes so much sense to me, so much sense. So anyways, if I plug that in, 101.81. Okay, 8,430. Um, it should be a $14,000 trade. And it's that bums me out. That bums me out because um, because honestly, like I I legitimately had this thing queued up and was so stoked on the setup. So stoked on the setup. And then I saw the volatility and I'm like, add to that bitch. And right, like, look at this. In the grand scheme, I'm still, like, my entry is still good. Here, you know, here versus here. Like, it's still a good entry. There's still some likely downside. I just know I have to be prepared for my entry to get tested. All of the profit that I see with $2,000, $3,000 to get tested against before the downside actually comes down to the 618. And it could never do that. It like it could totally be like, nah, we're not doing that today. Thanks, bro. Because um, here's like a little four hour trend line. And I'm, I, fuck right. There's going to be a bounce here whenever it gets down here. So let me just add a little alert. All right. 
And so that's my, my choice now. Like now I kind of have to be like, oh, I have to make another decision. The reason I like to swing trade is I have to make, I get to make fewer decisions. I don't have to make as many decisions. I don't have to sit here at the charts and watch every little uptick, downtick. I can walk away. I can do other work. Um, I will be going to the gym in an hour. I am working on my next video. So uh, this is who I am. I'm starting to see people are seeing me on the leaderboard of some funded traded accounts. And, and so I figured I'm going to start boosting my content again um, and just letting people know uh, that I am looking to do a mentorship because I want other people to win too. I know this feeling. I know the fight. I know the struggle. I know the grind. And I have fought like hell for this. I fought like fucking hell for this. And being able to give it back will not only make me a better trader, but most importantly, it will offer me the opportunity to see somebody else win. Because if you can't share your wins and you can't revel in the wins of the people you care about, what the fuck are we doing here? What are you doing here, huh? Like that to me is the greatest gift is not to say, oh God, thank you for this gift. This gift is so great. I must use this gift, but to give that gift back to the people who need it most. So I have developed a gift in this skill, in this mindset, and I am here to give it back. And again, the moment that's going to be no charge. So I can make sure I work out the kinks before I roll out my actual uh, time and charge for my time. With that said, peace, y'all, conscious crypto. Hey, what's the point of major gains if you lose yourself in the process? Until next time.
Welcome to Conscious Crypto. Reason I'm making this is because um, I'm actually having one or two people watching my channel because we're in mentorship and that's enough for me. That's enough motivation for me to start producing content and explain my line of thinking and where I found success in the markets. Um, and so I wanted to start to talk about Forex and why I like Forex is it, man, it feels predictable. Um, I mean, there's setups in crypto, which is where I started my trading and, and they're great. And the volatility, you know, make you a ton of money. It can also be incredibly frustrating. Um, if you're a tight stop person, um, uh, and the one bad thing I think maybe about crypto is it taught me to have like wider stops. Um, but it also allowed me to learn how to, how to endure drawdown and still remain with conviction in a trade setup that I believed in and potentially DCA, like continue to add, even though I'm not in a winning trade, I'm just like, Oh, there's a little bit of a better entry. Okay. Boom. And, and, and still like be like, Oh, okay. Like I'm wrong about this trade. I, you know, just close, um, because of the volatility of crypto and getting wicked out so many times when I'm in profit and just like, Oh, I'm just in the stop loss, like a responsible trader, boom, clank, Okay, and now the market's running without me. Um, and looking at those and being like, oh, you could have gotten back in. And times I've gotten back in and got wicked out again in profit. So um, it can be incredibly frustrating sometimes. But at the same time, I, um, I, I'm i grateful for it. And I'm grateful for the opportunity the volatility creates. Now, Forex, again, a little bit, maybe because it's more regulated, but like it's a little bit more steady. There's totally volatility and there's totally the opportunity to get wicked out just like equities. Um, but when I look at equities, I don't understand it. I've identified one strategy that has been back tested and actually shows some viability and it involves divergence. Um, so divergence and trend lines and those two things seem to work across all markets. So one of the first things I look for uh, on higher time frames is divergence um, and trend lines. So for example, like there's a trend line obviously going with, and I usually don't use these kinds of support resistance trend lines going in markets, but like on USD CAD, it worked. And so when at some point when you see it work one, two, three times, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to take this short. And another way to look at it is like, this is just resistance. Boom, just resistance, big sell-offs. Um, but of course, you know, starts breaking that and maybe you get wicked out and then you're like, oh shit, I was right. So this is what I mean is trend lines work, but also look at this trend line. So though this went from a different price action trend line to a, to another price action trend line, this remained in a similar trend line. Um, let's move this down here. Boom. One, two, three, one, two, three, boom long to the upside, all right? Um, now, it depends how long you stay in that, of course. That's up to you. So, you know, I can find trend lines everywhere um, in the TDI. And they don't always work. And the other thing about it is you, it just tells you when to start paying attention, when to start looking for other signals, when to start looking for higher volume, when to start looking for uh, bullish, you know, engulfing candles or bearish engulfing candles or, you know, hammer stick candles, um, you know, dragonfly dojis, like whatever, you're just looking for activity in the market, liquidity being picked up. Uh, so anyways, I wanted to go over this specific trade with USD CAD. Um, and again, look at this like trend line one, two, three, and then guess what? We get a divergent trend line. And this is where I just started lighting the fuck up. Um, a divergent trend line here as we come to all time or not all time highs, but past highs right here, big, strong. And this is a box I drew, so it must have had other, yeah. So one, two, three, yeah. Of course, I'm like, oh yeah, we could easily get rejected here. Um, So zooming back in, I'm looking at like the daily, looking at the resistance, then I come in on the four hour and there's a little trend line on the four hour, but the one hour was hitting heavy. One, two, three, four, five hits 
of bullish divergence coming into resistance. I don't even know if there was news, but this happened at the opening of New York and we can look at that closer. So this is the Brinks box, like the pre-market session um, and boom, pop to the high as New York opens, which is yeah, like 7.30 my time and then the opening minutes. It plinks up to the top. This is a vector candle. And just to explain vector candle. So essentially, like here's an example of like the red candle, the the blood red candle. Um, so one of these, one of those. It is, it indicates a bearish climax volume. The candle's volume is greater than or equal to 200% of the average volume of the last 10 candles. So it's taking into account past price action saying, I mean, like, you know, say you're in an uptrend, you're in an uptrend, you're in an uptrend. It's like, and there's like strength. And then you see a red bearish candle. That's 200% of the average volume of those last 10 candles. So it's like saying, there's been a lot of volume leading up to this. And then now the volume has changed directions. Um, and it's all about the amount of like the number of transactions inside of that candle. So going back to it, we're going to play it out here. And I was loading up inside of here. I remember just adding, I added like uh, three lots initially. Then I saw this wick and I added 10, uh, 17 lots, then three lots. I can pull it up for y'all. Ugh, I don't want to, I don't want to log in right now. Um, just take my word for it. They, this was actually something that they, they tried to flag me on. They had no lot, lot limit restrictions or anything like that, but they're like, this was gambling. And I'm like, no, this was conviction. And I wrote an entire email. I'll make another video about it. But I wrote an entire email explaining that I understood the math, the probabilities, the edge, and, 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 and I trusted myself as a trader and it was a phenomenal setup. So I took it. Um, so again, on the one hour, just, just screaming at me. And then you get this sucker and I added another three lots there and I'm just going to go and play this sucker out. Right. Boom, baby. A little bit of an up kick there and then continues down. I close, I didn't to pass my challenge. I only needed to like, I was like, I didn't need to, it didn't need to go far for me. I was very eager on being done with my challenge. Oh, by the way, check this out. This trend line I drew. Guess what clicked right off of it again? Like another opportunity for an entry. Like trend lines on these fucking, on the RSI, TDI, is freaking gold, man. It's gold. It really like, it, it, for me, it's like, oh, that's, yeah. So anyways, that was the trade. This continues like a whole fun thing. But um, again, right, I didn't need to be in this trade longer. If it was my personal account, Hell yeah, I would have waited for this A, this A, and then a W, and then probably some up, some up from here. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Probably some down from there. That's just a rollover. Almost like, um, and sometimes like things work like this. You could look at this as a candle or a cup and handle, right? Sometimes patterns work. Sometimes they work. And I just, I, in Forex, like, I will play them, um, you know, and then drops. So that's the cup and handle right there. Um, one more time. You see it? So anyways, sometimes they just work. Um, but the biggest thing that I use is I'll go to, and I'm in a Euro USD trade right now, and I'm in a Euro CHF long right now. Um, that is based on divergence. One, two, three, four. I might be a touch early, um, but it is a support zone. So let's just kind of show you where price action is trying to respond. Right there. Same spot that it was right back here. And sometimes I like to do that. I like to go back in the charts and be like, where is a support area? Oh, it looks like here is a support area, you know, and then come forward to current price action and start confirming it. Boom, touch and go. Oh, okay. And again, like only reason I was getting in a touch early is because I'm starting to see transaction volume. 
um, down candle, up candle, retrace more buying, more buying up. And there could be another down to get more buys in here. But on a four hour time frame to see this much vector activity happening in a support area with four hour bullish divergence starting from way back here. Jeez, one, two, three. This one comes down a little lower than that one, but it's still higher than this one. And then another one, you know, uh, two hits. So plus that's a pretty big. Anyways, I'm in that long. Let's see. I'm in this short, which I'm not super. I don't know about this short. So anyways, um, to me, if this is a place to turn, it will eat this liquidity back up, but it won't break and close above these highs. Uh, so this is my original trade and I closed it right before this drop into profit. Um, but because it's five day trend line, look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, possibly nine um, bearish divergence hits, right? Price action flying up on a five day time frame, which is all that Forex trades on is like essentially five days. It's dropping down. Um, now I go to the one hour. There is no uh, there's only one hit of bullish divergence, but there is a trend line happening right here. And then on the 15, it's a tiny little uptrend and normally I don't draw those. I'm actually just gonna delete that, but just so you know, one, two, if you were a scalper, like there you go, there's a perfect example of how you could maybe fade this trade. Um, but again, you'd have to, yeah. So this to me is important too. This is a point of interest. It's called the CPR indicator by KGS. And it essentially, I can't tell you exactly how it operates, but it's its really a volatility and a price action indicator in one. So the tighter these pivot points are, these pivot lines are, and it's interesting because pivot lines is part of the PVSRA and Steve Morrow market method, marker making, marker, market making. Bass is tired. Market making method. Um, he, that's hard to say, Steve Morrow market making method. Um, so you'll notice like how it respects this, right? When it gets above, drops in, bounces off, 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 drops in, bounces off. Like look at this beautiful uptrend where like you can enter anytime it hits one of these and enter again here, then enter again here and then close if it breaks um there yeah and you would have had like eight trading opportunities in a row so once it gets on a trend it's really impressive how it works um and i really like these i really like these like boom and then comes back and tests like big pushes probably a little bigger than that pushes up before retesting um I'm pretty big on that. Although when it's in an uptrend and then it prints at the beginning of every day, which is technically Tokyo. Uh, so those are the reason I have those on there. I just wanted to mention that. And then the daily open seems to be something that is highly respected in um, Forex. Okay. Now with that said, those are the trades that I'm in and I'm in a Euro USD long and here's why and then i'm going to show you a really cool euro usd pattern that i played two patterns actually a cup and handle and a what i call a cow which is a quart of wood at the low of the day so a cow on lod la, 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 la. oh it's not as pretty as i liked okay so anyways um on the four hour you can see there's this trend line coming down and now there's this trend line forming up now, since it's in a strong downtrend and Euro hasn't been showing strength, I, I could see what I'm playing to not work. But again, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's delete that. And let's go way back. And let's go ahead and add that in. So if I, right, if I just do this, and we go, okay, so something's happening here. Look at these vector candles, right? Push down, buy it back up. Um, 
pushing down, bought up, down, bought up, tries to push it down, and then it breaks out. So something's happening in this area. Let's go see more recent price action. All right, some buys, some buys, then some push into it, and then break, retest, can't, you know, just interesting. But like to me, these are more important. This push up, reject, then a breakthrough. Anytime something breaks through that kind of resistance and then comes back to retest it after it's been really just downsold, right? That's a beautiful sign to me. That's like, a, oh, our first higher high, boom, setting our first higher low off to the races love that action this is just intuitive price reading um now we go over here so why do i like this because now i'm looking at it again and i'm looking at that green line i'm going what what are we doing here man what's going on here sure 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 uh, and as i look at it again i'm actually not super stoked on this not super stoked on this i thought i was playing off the blue line over there um, I guess we could look at this blue line as well. So, yep, some sell down, buy up, sell down, buy up, sell through, but still buy up and buy up. So, I mean, this is an area of interest and this candle, this candle, both vectors, both strong, both strong, could be setting up for a move upward and it'll likely move up a little bit um, rarely does it just like just break through that stuff but it'll likely move up a little bit now whether it's a strong move again will be based on these kind of breakthrough candles um, big breakouts big breakouts big retests like this one boom Woo. and then it comes back down before taking off again so Anyways, that's the trade I'm in. Here is the trade I wanted to show. Just get rid of, and we'll get rid of this as well, just to keep it clean for most people's eyes. All right, so I woke up to this. Um, I wasn't even noticing. I got, this is sometimes you just get lucky, right? You look at a chart and you go, oh, I know that. I know what's happening here. Um, and this happens a lot before news, right? Like a big, strong pull down or has been being pushed down before it wants to be brought back up, um, before the market dynamics about to change, you know, basically letting people fill their bags, people who know. So here I am on the one hour and I saw this coming out of the London session in a little pause and I'm going to slow this one down. So boop 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 and it just starts sticking in this little range right it starts sticking in this little range right before new york opens look at this like up down up down up down up down but like it's not it's such a tiny movement i'll measure it in a second but um what do we got six pips this is basically a six, seven pip range right there. That's where it stuck, coming out of the London Open, waiting for New York Brinks op session, um, which starts, you know, 7 a.m. my time, 9 a.m. their time. And little vector, little vector. And I think I woke up to this and I saw the strength pushing out. And I was like, that is my trade. Um, it's an old pattern cord of wood at the low of the day right into the open and this is something like where i love these i'll size up i love these it's a bread and butter trade i feel super confident in it and, and the way i look at it too if i'm nervous about sizing up or taking it i said what's the bigger pain like what is the greater pain because the pain right now is like oh i could lose this trade i could be wrong i could lose money i could ah oh man you know yeah no i'm not gonna do it and then i walk away and i come back and i'm like you fuck you fucking dumb fuck fear fuck you know like just hate i hate myself i i, I ridicule myself because i gave into that that fear that fear of pain um and to me the greater pain is not taking the trade seeing my setup at an opportune moment, at a perfect, beautiful moment like this. And, and be like, oh, it's not the best entry. Maybe I should just like, no, I saw it and my invalidation is here. Um, 
boom, if I'm entering here, my invalidation is here and like I can set a hard stop on that one. Let's see if we got any liquidity to recover to get a sense of where this trade might go. Yeah, like possibly up into here. Um, yeah, I could see that. I could see that and there's that trend line up there. So, you know, I might even just, just set it at that and be willing to take profit in here or partials. Um, so we're gonna go back to the 15 minute. We're gonna see what happens. Boom, get this off. All right, ready? To check the technique. Remember, double bottom, cord of wood at the low of the day. It's just a pattern setting up into the New York session. There's not much more I could ask for in the charts. Little vector action. Um, I don't even think it was news. I don't think there's any news that propelled this sucker, but it began to take off. You can track the white line, tracking mine. I'll go ahead and speed it up for you all. Oh, there it is. There's the vector activity. Boom. You, like... Again, five lots and you are making thousands of dollars in seconds. So again, come to our four hour. And yeah, it came into this liquidity and ate it up. Left some liquidity of its own, you can see. And like at this point, shoot, what time is it? You know, three o'clock in the afternoon. I had a great trading day, bro. I had a great trading day, so I'm getting out. Again, already taking profit, already adjusting my stop, um, watching it roll over. I think it, dude, I think it rolled right into my next pattern, which was the cup and handle. Um, I think that was a little farther back. Let's see. Like, let's just play it. Let's just play it. Okay, to me, this cup and handle, I think it took me a minute to get into it. Um, let's see if the four hour was going. Yeah, I mean, it's coming into resistance. You see a four hour reject. Um, yeah, pretty sure this was the cup and handle play. Let me move that back. All right, man, this stuff is so awesome. I love this shit, love this shit, all right. All right, the RSI is throwing me off a little bit, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, we'll take a short position here. Really, we can just put it right above here. I'll put it above the London Open. Um, and then we'll come back down. Let's see if we got any type of, right back down to our support. Sure. I actually have more of a sense that we can, we can probably catch it right here. Six. And I'm gonna watch on the 15. Again, cup and handle, right? Inverse cup and handle, sorry. And then it should break down this much. This is what we're expecting at least. That's how people do patterns. They're like, well, you measured this and then it comes down to this. And that's just a safe way, you know, to get a risk to reward ratio. But I think was feeling this downtrend starting. Yeah, downtrend starting, downtrend starting. All right, so sorry. Let's jump in. Let's see what happens. Oh, shit, immediately. Oh, yeah, New York. New York, of course, right into the open. I'm awake. I'm at the charts. Immediately into profit. Don't we fucking love that? Um, And now we start making decisions or like, look, okay, okay, a little hold up, but nothing, nothing serious. Doesn't make any sense why I'd be turning here. Um, This is now where you start to go, okay, it's been long day um we're at 1 45 in the afternoon now new york is closed let's wait for tokyo i can go work out i can go live my life and i can go see what tokyo is going to do so that's sydney bringing it up likely for tokyo to drop it down a little rejection not breaking the there you go Tokyo is like, fuck that. We're going to keep this trend going down. Um, well, I'm glad these were back to back. I forgot that, you know, I forgot they were back to back. And this is where you're like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking hot right now. Like come in a handle pattern. <laughs> no, I don't normally play those. But at the worst, you know, my invalidation is up here above that. It's like there's a resistance trend line 
And again, for some reason, Forex will honor those. Um, I'm sure other markets do too, but I just, it's sometimes in crypto, but not like, it's not reliable. It's not reliable. And cup and handles, I don't fucking play that shit. And sometimes the head and shoulders, yeah, especially if it's on the RSI. All right, so there you go. Well, it's Command Z, just so you all understand. All right, now we're starting to see some activity. It's in London. I'm awake for New York. Hey, this has been a great trade from New York to New York. Like, yeah, we could take some profits here. I remember actually, I think it took profits here and it kept spilling over, um, which I think got me a little upset. Yeah, I think it was just spilling over and I was tempted to get back in it. Like I was missing out or something. But honestly, like this would have been where I would have been like, ah, I'm going to start looking for longs. Like I, I, I took my short to the downside. I caught more than 70% of the move, which is all we can fucking ask for, you know? Um, and if you're like a day trader, maybe your 70% of the move would have been here to here, you know, like 50 to 70% would be here to there. So there you go. Boom. It's really respecting this area. And it could very well pop. So anyways, there's a reason this line is drawn here. It is a support zone. It will give you opportunities. But you are betting in a contrarian fan, uh, fashion. So short, short. Yep. 100% short. Checked off the 800 EMA in a downtrend near an old uh, pivot point, you know, resistance line, whatever you want to call it you know, New York open short. So sometimes when you get a, this is my recommendation, when you start to lock on to a pair or an asset and you're like, I, I am trading Apple really well. I'm trading the QQQ really well right now. Like I understand the price action. Stop fucking around with other with other assets. Like you can look at them while you're bored or something and, and waiting for your setup to, to show up. But, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of once you start understanding the price action and getting a sense, because you're watching it all the time, you're like, oh yeah, I mean, the, the market's bearish. Clearly the market's bearish. You know, they're pushing this down and, you know, they're, you know, they're buying the US dollar. So um, I I like my, my probabilities of a short. <sighs> all right, so that's it. That's all I wanted to show. Um, that replay tool, the most valuable freaking tool that that trading view has 100% that and this tool copy image i have a whole crypto and a whole forex compendium of things that i like to look at in the morning of like remembering there's that usd cad short it's at the top because i'm like these are your a plus fucking setups remember these um Look at that bullish divergence on that same USD CAD. So like I trade this and then I'm like, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this upswing, but also they're showing some weakness. So a rollover cup and handle, totally plausible. Um, USD CAD trend lines, just to remind myself, hey, sometimes trend lines work. And when they work, they work, right? These are days, weeks long um, trends right there. Um, there's what I just showed you. The quarter wood at the low day. There's the cup and handle. Yep, I traded that. It looks like I got in a little later than I was hoping, but I still got in in the New York session. And I said, you know what? It just broke the cup cup and handle pattern, so trade it down. Um, trend line coming up. Oh, no, that was the short. Little bearish divergence, big vector reject. Some of this is intuitive. And there it is on the one hour. Like I saw it pop up, couldn't hold it, drop down. Um, looks like I got in in the New York session. Had to wait through London to the next New York session to capitalize on that. Uh, USJPY, oh, I remember this intuitively. Yeah, this I took a monster short. And actually closed that early because I made a trading error and I shorted Bitcoin when I meant to add to my USJPY short. And within a day, like a couple hours, I came back and I looked and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And I lost like three or four thousand dollars out of my nine thousand dollar total profit. And it just shook my psyche. So I closed everything. 
because I was like, I got to take this loss. And I closed the JPY trade, which is like a total another execution error. And this all led me to, um, I actually got back in on this JPY trade on the long side and I closed it stupid early. Like I was clearly on tilt. I was clearly emotional. I clearly wasn't trading well, um, but I wanted to remind myself of it. So I have this folder and then I have my actual like winners folder. And this is the actual trades that I've taken. Um, looks like I need to do a little work because it's not up to speed. Like I don't even have that USD CAD trade in there. But anyways, I started this more recently because I was like, I was thinking, hey, you you have all of these screenshots of awesome setups. But especially with the crypto one, I was like, I need the... I need to remember the setups that have made me money because it's one thing to see it in hindsight or it's one thing to see it as it's setting up and not take it. It's a whole nother thing to see it, take it and win and then remind yourself that you're capable of that whole sequence, that one, two, three. Um, Usually I add in like what actually happened after that though. FTD. Yeah, so this is one I took. Explaining this one, this is the perfect FTD because it breaks structure. I wish I could show it on the actual chart, but it broke um, uh, lower high, higher lows broke higher lows came down dropped again and then came up and it was like nah you guys like we're not in uptrend anymore you know we tried we got rejected we got shut down we dropped to the downside plus this cpr line to just just to explain this um it is a volatility measure as well. So when you see the line contracts, like these these points of interest contract, it's it's usually a sign of a big move coming. Um, and you see it in crypto all the time. And another thing I like about it is in Forex, it rarely touches the far reaches of the volatility. So if it was gonna drop down and it touched here, it's usually a good place to long. If it goes up here, as you can see, and it doesn't, it can't hold there and it drops sh short. So it's like, it rarely touches these. And when it does, to me, it's a sign of like, okay, we can, we can, um, here's a good example, like little volatility coming off that squeeze, big volatility, the tighter it is, like the more I zoom out and the tighter it is, usually the better sign that works the best again in crypto. Um, let's show some Bitcoin. Boom. One here, push up. One here, push down. One here, drop. One here, up. Few of them stacking on the way up. And I love seeing this. It's like these just consolidating, consolidating, consolidating. And as soon as I see volatility, like a breakout candle continuing to trend. Yeah, that's like one of the few times I'll trade breakouts. And I won't wait for the breakout, but um, I'll trade breakouts. Okay. There's just examples everywhere. Boom. Boom. And so again, once you have like an indicator and you go back and you look at certain things, this is what I've done. Like I've broken away from what everyone else does. And I've taken all the things that I've been taught, all the things I've been given and just been like watching price action. And at some point you start to see patterns. You start to get curious. You start to like in my meditation retreats, my mind inevitably will go to the charts and it'll be like, oh, you know what? Like, what about that pattern? Do you see that pattern often on maybe maybe the five day and then confirm it on the one day? Um, and does it you know, couple with anything? Maybe vector activity, liquidity sweeps, like you know all the different things that I now know of and I consolidate them. And and I'm just not about learning technical analysis from anyone anymore. Like I just don't want to do it. I 
have learned what a, what a candle means, what a wick means, um, what a trend means, what a higher low means, what, uh, you know, I know what the fair value gap and the kill zone and, and all that, you know, liquidity. I know what those things mean. And so I don't need to dilute my knowledge base. I would rather keep my stuff simple. And if one day it stops working and someone's speaking my language and saying, yeah, like, da, 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 like I understand divergence. Look at this. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is a four hour, four hour divergence, man. Kidding me? You freaking kidding me? Four hour divergence in an uptrend? You kidding me? You kidding me? That's crazy. And this is the tough part is if I had seen this, boom, but then there's divergence there. Yeah, and all of this vector activity actually might have closed my trade. Might even, yeah, have taken a short. That's actually like a really awesome short activity. But the thing I'm saying is that once you start seeing things, it's hard to stop seeing them. Um, and this TDI trend line is one of my, look at that shit. It's like one of my favorite things. Here, didn't work. I love it. Awesome. I was like, look at this. How great. Um, it didn't work. I mean, sure, if you're scalping, I guess it worked. But um, I would have gotten stopped out because it broke these highs before coming back down. And again, it's just this whole thing trying to continue an uptrend. And, uh, you know, trend lines, sometimes they fucking work, man. It's weird, but sometimes they freaking work. So, let's see. I just, look at me going. All right, you can stop watching whenever you want to stop watching. You can 2X this thing whenever you want to. Yeah, just keep drawing things here. Ah, oh, beautiful. See if this was tradable. I would likely be taking longs depending on this price action, but there's clearly a channel in here. And so I'd likely be taking longs over shorts. Yeah, so ah, it's a decent short. Again, look at pivot line, comes back up, tests it, drops. But again, we would know this trend had started here. So this worked only to get us to here. Why did I circle that? Let's take a look. Oh, I know why I circled that. Why did I circle this? Why did I circle this? Huh. Well, when you, oh, is this current price? No. Um, drop one, drop two, drop. So I'm not really sure why I circled this other than it is. And sometimes I take these trades again. I, I don't size heavy on these because I'm kind of like speculating. But if you see this four hour trend boom and then it breaks that and then it comes and retested and you know what did bitcoin finally finally break down oh finally right one it's only 1.7 yeah finally god damn took long enough um i just i did not i stopped shorting these man i stopped shorting this this market because it's just exhausting it's friggin exhausting like i don't some people love this kind of price action and i am just like it's trying to tire me out and i won't i won't give it my energy um oh this is sixty thousand. no this is um old price action it's like oh did it finally break down um anyways clink clink all right cheers y'all yep here's the exhausting price action right push up back down i'm waiting for long i'm waiting for long but what i need to see is some strength to the upside and then a retest which is like it could take i don't know i'll wait i'll wait a week or two uh, so i'll wait through next week i'll see if july has anything in store for us um but just this is just look at this right for a swing trader, this is fucking annoying. So you, let's see, I got a good fill here. 
I come down, I'm like 4% in profit, but nope, it comes back up and now I'm 1% in profit. And I would like to have moved my stop loss. So now my stop loss is here and then I come down and it's just taking for freaking ever. Here's the best way to look at it on a daily or 12 hour. There you go. Look at this. All of this boom to boom to boom to boom to boom. I mean, it's pretty, it is, you know, that's decent market structure. I'm not going to lie about that. It's decent market structure, but all right. And if I was in that kind of zone and I was like, I understand Bitcoin right now. Yeah, I could probably take advantage of this. I took advantage of this one. Again, I don't like these trades. They're like too much maintenance for me. Um, Cause it was what J Japan and then I wasn't awake till here. So that actually made my risk to reward ratio like a one to one. Fuck that. I mean, fucking this game for one to one reward. You know, fuck that. It's not me. All right. Cheers, y'all. Conscious Crypto. Thanks for y'all for watching. If you just wanted a sense, I'm going to keep making these videos of giving you a sense of like um, what I'm looking at in the markets. And then I'll make videos just for the mint mentees on my strategies. And again, it's subjective. It's intuitive. But I'm going to give you great examples of how I see the market, both in Forex and in crypto and give you examples of my strategies and why I trade them. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of them setting up right now. So if you want another trade signal, um, it feels like a four hour. Yeah. I would like to say four hour divergence, but um, ETH is showing that a lot better where I had to close this trade because it's not giving up ground like Bitcoin's giving up ground, likely because the Ethereum ETF is supposed to be approved next month. And those cats are filling their bags. Um, not, not like, I'm not saying retail. I'm saying the authorized participants that will be providing liquidity to the ETF managers like BlackRock, like ARK Invest, those people are filling their bags because they make the market. And that's why Bitcoin has been so fucking screwy lately because sometimes there's huge outflows and the price just stays the same. Sometimes there's huge inflows and the price goes down and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And it's because for 20 weeks, 20 weeks, man, this they bought a year and a half's worth of supply of Bitcoin. The amount that the miners mine in 18 months, they bought in 20 weeks. And so, of course, we saw a new all-time high, way ahead of the halving, way ahead of schedule. Of course we did. Why? Because in this period, these fuckers were just buying, 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 buying Bitcoin. And then sure, hype retail probably pushed a little bit more. And then at, at this point, they saw all time high and they're like, no, the downside is too great and the upside is too little, you know, for them. So this market is different. Ever since we got this double top shit over here, double top within a double top, um, and the summer lull and too early and Wyckoff distribution pattern and then Wyckoff reaccumulation pattern. Like this market is being manipulated by institutions and I, I don't like that, but I can trade that. I can trade that shit. Once you know, you can trade that shit. I mean this right here. If I didn't trust crypto in the four year cycle, and the fact that we'd at least have some sort of like crazy mania activity and greed would go nuts. I would be, I am shorting to hedge. I do short. I open little shorts to, to hedge my, my portfolio. But like, I would look at this and go, e -e -e -e. this is not good. This is not good guys. Um, look at head and shoulders on the, yeah, this is, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, and the way Solana just broke 
And Solana is my favorite. And Solana just broke a reliable trend line. Trend line going back to here. Do, 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 Little break. Retest of old. Pop, pop, pop. Test, 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 test. And now we've broken it. And we are just not showing super duper awesome strength. And so what I do think could happen is this. This is my last case hope before I have to sell and just take the hit on my portfolio, which was was monster, especially when the prices were up here. And then I started buying back in here and a couple, a couple hits down there. And then now I'm like, all right, if it does break this one, two, three, one, two, three breaks and then springs um sure i guess if it comes back down to 100 it's still in play it's still valid in fact i would love to buy solana at 100 in a bull run but we'd have to see what bitcoin was saying because bitcoin really determines whether we're still in a bull run all right, again, this was long. I'm going to probably cut that part at the end, make it a separate video. Cheers. What's up? It's Bass, Conscious Crypto. Um, I'm making this because uh, I'm, I feel sleep deprived. I did, was, was not able to sleep last night. Not well. Um, and that, that for me is like tossing and turning to like 2 o'clock, 2.30. Um, that's like real bad for me. So uh, I did everything I was supposed to do to downregulate my system. I just had a heavy EMTR sesh and I moved this energy from my childhood and my past. Um, and I find that incredibly valuable. But given that happened at like 3 to 4, um, I guess it just wasn't enough time for me to downregulate, and, and that's how things happen. I haven't done EMDR in a while. I'm with a new therapist, but it's incredibly valuable to seek healing modalities like that, therapeutic modalities, because uh, you got to get into your subconscious. This is why traders meditate. Like you got to get into your subconscious and do some work there. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be making decisions you don't understand. You're going to be self-sabotaging for reasons you don't understand. Um, and luckily, I mean, my balance didn't take too much of a hit. Uh, but these are the two trades I'm, I'm talking about. I essentially opened this one last night, ETH short, and then uh, Frank Yen. I had opened for a while. And I'll show you the technical analysis of why I had them. And I'll also show you the gut-wrenching way I closed these trades uh, because I was up late. I shouldn't have been looking at the charts anyways. I should have allowed those trades to stay open, trusted my stop, stop loss, uh, which was this. All right, on the five day, there is a, TDI trend with bullish diverge bearish. I gotta take my bearish divergence like nobody's business. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 nine, yes, eight, like eight hits. It's just was for me. It still is a trade setup. It's still a trade setup for me. And I'm actually gonna look at frank pairs like your USD, Euro, like just see how it's trading against other currencies to get a sense of like, hey, is this still something I can short or in other charts can I go long? Is it, you know, is the franc getting weaker? And I think it's had a, a crazy overextended rally, um, which is pretty obvious when you look at the five day, it's just like, it's crazy extended rally with all this divergence. So this is probably a chart I'll take a little bit of a trade as well. However, let's go into the 15 minute and see what happened. Now I enter way back here. And the reason I put my stop up here is the CPR lines are basically expressing volatility. Um, this print up here had me thinking, all right, like it rejected here. So I entered right down here and that's 
plain truth. Um, but I was like, I give myself a little bit of space. Now I entered with five lots, which if I lost that, it would have been like three, three to four thousand dollars loss. So it was a little heavier than I wanted it to be. And you can see that the drawdown, well, I guess it would be like three because the drawdown got about 75% of the way um, before I closed. And I would love to tell you that I closed like right here. And I don't even remember seeing this candle. I don't remember seeing this vector reject. Uh, maybe I was looking on the one hour. I just remember this and I remember this. And I was like, oh, like I can't, I can't do this. I need to take my mind off of this. I need to be able to sleep. So I closed that trade right then and there only to not be able to sleep and notice 30 minutes later that this happened, that what I expected happened. Now, the reason I closed it was because I thought, based on my phone, I looked up Forex Factory, and this said 3.30, because it's New York time. But my filters, my settings on my desktop show mountain time. Now, I didn't realize that they were going to release this at 1.30, which I was already up for. So I literally closed this like minutes before they released this news, because I thought it would be another two hours before they released it. and. And I thought, okay, I was like, ah, I don't know. Like if they hold it, this could still continue. And I went against my narrative that they bring price up into a news event only to drop it. Or they bring price down into a news event only to pump it. Uh, now, like 80 to 90% of the time, that's what I see. It's, it's like clockwork. And the volatility allows for you to make money quick and exploit the news to your favor. So... Uh, the final part of this that really got my goat here uh, was that I closed it right before, but I also closed ETH and I was tired. And this was my entry. I saw all of this um, bearish divergence, this hit to the high, vector reject, vector reject. That's one, two, three. That's enough for me. Um, I entered and was able to level out my entry right here. But of course, London was opening and it showed strong on the one hour too. I believe the one hour had a, yep, a vector candle up, which is classic, right? Classic push up in the open. Hey guys, we're going higher. Boop, drop it back down, a little bit of a double top. Um, of course, I wanted to get to sleep, so I closed this trade instead of allowing it to honor my stop, which would, uh, was, again, right here at this at this high. Um, and so, anyways, it's not like a major trade, but you can see based on when I took this, that it's in profit right now. I would be in profit, but I closed them, and I just, like, that crushed me because I woke up with terrible energy on a little bit of sleep and also recognized that I completely faltered on my execution. Now, the title of this why execution is so deadly, like something to that effect, like why execution is killing your trading. Uh, because there's four foundations and execution is uh, is the execution of your edge and the execution of your risk. And then um, execution can be little things like taking a buy when you meant to take a sell, uh, entering five lots when you meant to enter or 50 lots when you meant to enter five lots. Like there's just things you're like, whoa, and what happened? And then you don't have the nuts to close it your execution is off. If affected your psychology, you're making this harder than it is. And that's what I wanted to bring this message on this trade. And that, and the uh, uh, Frank, Frank Yen is like, dude, you're making this harder than it needs to be. Harder than it needs to be. Um, now again, because, yeah, I, I, this is what I would imagine. I do imagine that this is going to try to move back up, could possibly set new highs, but it'd be very interesting um, to see how it reacts in these lines right around that golden Fibonacci. Uh, that's something where if I saw some vector activity, some rejects at the opening of a session, I would enter back in this trade. And I'd enter it with a position that allows me to hold for like weeks. Um, I'd enter a position that allowed me to take a partial off. I have a quick, heavy trade. Oh, got the volatility, caught it. Cool. That's 10 lots. Now I'm going to take five off the table and then maybe look for another opportunity to take two off the table and let three of them run and let three of them zero out. I've already made profit. I'm trading without risk. Let them zero out. So um, they can come back to my entry where I have set my stop and they can stop me out. So that's how I'm going to trade this. Just wanted to update it. Execution is so important and it, it's got me a couple of times this week. Um, not all losses, but in this case, yeah, these were losses and they shouldn't have been. Should not have been $2,000 loss, should not have been a $360 loss. I mean, I did not give these any time to make their move. Um, and so, you know, trading tired, right? Not ideal, trading tired, not ideal. So I'm gonna go do a meditation, uh, I'm gonna nap, I'm gonna get a workout in, I'm gonna get my mind right, and I'm gonna see um, if I can't approach with an objective neutral mindset to the markets, so. That's all I wanted to say. You know, it's just like, hey, we all make these mistakes, but it's in making these mistakes um, that you could have a perfect edge, perfect strategy, perfect risk management. But when you make execution errors, you're making this harder than it needs to be. 
Um, so this could, I might start a series of videos saying you're making trading harder than it needs to be. And that's that. Cheers. Tired boy.